Yes, you would think that uh, to follow the commandments to love neighbor and love enemy are to be expected and to be easy to do. You know, the whole law is summarized in loving God and loving neighbor. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount is the, the most foundational text in the Gospels, and it's a very clear commandment, what Christ expects and demands of us uh, to love the enemy. Uh, but I, I think if you're in the West, if you're in the U.S., I think you are part and parcel of a culture that thrives on power and domination and enemy making. Just think of the last 70 years of the American political history and American theology. It's, it, it consistently, consistently develops an enemy to hate and to dehumanize whether it's a black person, whether it's uh, the Muslim, whether it's the Japanese, whether it's uh, queer people, um, Russia, China. This is part and parcel of the American experience, uh, starting from the natives all the way till today. Uh, so this is an American issue, I think, and someone like me who's, who's a Palestinian, I'm not an American, I, I'm kind of more sensitive to it because I did not grow up in this environment, but. It, I think it's part of the empire, it's part of the American empire, that the empire needs to assert its power and domination uh, over other people. And that entails um, rendering them into savages, like happened to natives and blacks, or enemies, like is happening to you know Russians or Chinese or Japanese or uh, Vietnamese and so on and so forth. Um, and also the American culture is part of the wider Western culture that has a long history of what is called Orientalism, which is a bit of a dis disdain and condescension towards Muslims and Arabs. Historically, there's a lot to say about that culture of Orientalism, of how the West views the Middle East. And you see this in politician, politicians and what they say about the Middle East. You see this in movies of how they portray the Arab or the Muslim as to be angry and violent. You see this in literature and so on and so forth. So it's it's an overwhelming sentiment of dehumanizing and vilifying the, the other who is different, who looks different, who speaks differently, but also specifically the Arab and the Muslim. Now, add on top of all of that, of that kind of cultural uh, environment that we're in here in the US, uh, you have the Palestinian who is is the, on the receiving end of all of that bigotry historically and today, but also how it relates to Israel, how the Palestinian and the Palestinian people relate to Israel, uh, and because of political realities, because of theological uh, analyses that want to defend Israel and support Israel, uh, the Palestinian becomes um, insignificant, an obstacle, a problem, violent, fill in the blank. So in many respects, the American Christian, uh, it's a, has a, has a, the game is rigged again that, against the American Christian because his, his or her culture is overwhelmingly telling them to, to hate and to ignore and to dehumanize. So there's a lot of work where, you know, you go to church once, once a Sunday, if ever, and then seven days a week, you're still hearing all of that rhetoric about the other, about how to hate and how to, uh, reject and how to fight and so on. Um, and we have to also here also be critical of, of the outworking of Christian Zionism, uh, a very aggressive and I think for us as Palestinian Christians, a very hateful and racist ideology that does not regard the Palestinian as a human who is worthy of dignity and freedom. Only they think of God's promises and faithfulness to the Jewish people but that by definition also exclude the, excludes the Palestinian who have been living in the land for a very long time. And, uh, and the way they read the scriptures minimizes the Palestinian experience, uh, how they, they think they have this duty to support Israel. By definition, if you support Israel, you're going you're gonna to oppose those who oppose Israel, which in this case is the Palestinian people, Muslims and Christians who have been suffering 76 years under occupation uh, and segregation and discrimination and, and racism. So you would want to support Israel no matter what, even if that means the dehumanization of the Palestinians. And you have been doing that for 76 years. So why would you change now, right? Like that's, that's just the identity. This is the, the practice of the American empire 
the American culture, the media, the politicians, uh, and also the American church. Uh, so for you to be doing that work, to love your neighbor as yourself and to love the enemy is a very radical thing that is not part of the culture that you grew up in. Uh, so you have to do the work. And and it's so sad that 20, 2024 years later, uh, after Christ, uh, we are still we still have to go back to the foundations and the basics of our faith and say, you know what, maybe loving the enemy does not mean that I'm going to dehumanize the enemy. Maybe it means that I'm not going to bomb the enemy. Maybe it means that I'm going to make my enemy my friend and my sibling, and I'm going to actually love them. And it's hard work, uh, but it, it's work that has to be done.